In today's example, we are going to look at how to perform data validations with actions. I have a simple e-commerce schema with the tables, users, product, store, inventory. Products can be sold in multiple stores and there is inventory attached to each product. So depending on the available stock in a particular store for a particular product, a user can place an order. Right? So I have a cart table which allows users to add product to their cart. I'm going to graphical and I'm going to start writing a mutation which will say insert cart1 which accepts an object. We need to give the product ID. Let's say it's in the variable product ID and store ID with the variable store ID and finally user ID from the variable user ID and I'm going to return the ID of the cart. So I'm going to give the name of the mutation as create cart item which accepts these variables store ID of type integer and user ID of type integer. I can send in some query variables. I'm going to give product ID as one. I'm going to say store ID as two and user ID as two. All right, I have inserted an item into the cart. Now let's verify this data. All right, now the item has been inserted into the cart table, but we need to verify if this item can be added to the cart based on the inventory data available with us. We have the inventory table where we have mapped the product ID and the store ID along with the stock that is available. Now we need to check this condition for availability of stock before allowing anybody to add an item to the cart, right? So we're going to make use of actions to write the custom logic. So I'm going to make use of derive action because eventually we'll want to insert into the cart table. The derive action will give us some boilerplate code that we can get started with. And this is the action definition, which is of type mutation, create cart item with the three input arguments. We, we just need to return the ID of the cart. So I'm going to remove the other three fields. We can come back to the handler later. I'm going to click on create. All right, now the action has been created successfully. Let's go to CodeGen and click on Get Starter Kit to download the boilerplate Node.js Express code to write custom business logic. I'm going to download the starter kit. So I'm going to copy the link address. I'm going to do wget of this. I'm going to unzip the contents. Now, let's quickly do an npm install. We have a simple express app with routes being handled from the handlers folder. There is a simple hello world route, which is already there. Now we need to add a new route in the handlers folder to write our custom logic for the inventory check. So let's go back to the actions code gen. This is the auto-generated code for executing the mutation. We can run some business logic inside for doing the inventory check. I'm gonna copy this code and create a new handler here. I'm gonna name this create cart item. And we can see that there is the inbuilt Hasra mutation and there's an execute function which executes the GraphQL API using fetch. And there's a handler which, which parses the request body and makes the API call, right? Finally, if it's an error, we send an error message or if it's a success, we send back the response from the mutation. 
Now, before we do this mutation, we need to do some business logic here to actually do check stock availability. Now, let's go back to the actions tab and modify the handler URL so that I'm going to modify and add the route as create cart item. I want to click on save. Now let's run the node server to test the action. I'm going to say npm start. Let's head to graphical and test out this mutation. I'm going to say mutation, create cart item, and it accepts three arguments, product ID, store ID, and finally the user ID. I'm going to get back the ID. Let's execute this mutation. All right, the mutation from the action is working as expected. Now let's write the custom logic. We need to fetch the existing inventory data to make the condition for the stock availability. So I'm going to declare a new query, which will fetch from the inventory table, accepting the product ID and store ID, and it will give back the stock available as a response. Let's execute the query. So I'm making use of the execute function, which accepts the variables and a query. So I'm going to modify the existing execute function to accept an operation. And I'm going to change the Hasura operation to accept an operation. And here I'm sending the inventory query, which I've declared. And similarly, I'm going to send the Hasura operation in this execute argument. I'm going to parse the response for the inventory by PK and check if inventory by PK is not available, then return an error message which says invalid product or store. Finally, we process the stock available data and, and return an error message saying out of stock if the stock available is less than or equal to zero. We get the stock available data in the inventory by PK response. We are just making use of that response to check for the availability of stock and returning another message in case the inventory is less than zero. And finally, we'll modify the request body to accept user ID from the session variables. Session variables are available in a separate object. And I'm going to make use of XSR user ID session variable to auto template the user ID. Now let's remove user ID from the action input because we're getting this from the session variables automatically. So let's go ahead to actions and modify the input argument to delete the user ID. Let's check the inventory data once. So let's go ahead and try out this combination of product ID 2 and store ID 1 and see if the custom mutation is able to check that stock is zero and return an error. So I'm going to modify this to not have the user ID. I'm going to have the product ID as two and store ID as one. And as you can see, the custom mutation has returned an out of stock error message. Our action is working as expected, but we still have one thing to do. In case we have a successful mutation, we need to update the inventory data to decrement the stock available. I'm going to add the XS user ID to test this out. And I'm going to say user ID as two. And I'm going to change the product ID to one and test this mutation. And the cart item has been created. But as we mentioned, we need to update the inventory to decrement it by one. So I'm going to add this update mutation, which will update the inventory table to set the new stock value, it accepts a different variable. And I'm going to declare that new stock variable, which will be another integer. Now we need to calculate the new stock data from the existing data. So I'm going to decrement the stock value. I'm going to say new stock will be stock available minus one. And I'm going to send this new stock data to the Hasura operation Now let's test this mutation. I can send the same cart item query. And let me go to the inventory table and check that the stock available has now become nine. Earlier it was 10, if you remember. 
So we have done data validation to check if the inventory is available and allow the mutation to happen through the action. And finally, if the mutation is successful, we also ensure that the stock available is decremented by one. The mutation is a bulk mutation. So both of these mutations happen in a transaction, ensuring consistency of data. All right, with that, we've come to the end of this example for data validation. We'll look at more example use cases in the coming days.